In today's episode of the Dental Equipment Repair Channel, we are going to take a look at a wet ring vacuum pump with weak suction. The issue is tricky to identify because while the pump may appear to be fine, it really has a serious issue that can only be detected using specialized test equipment that we will demonstrate. Stick around until the end for a full explanation of why this issue happens and how to identify it prior to complete system failure. Let's get to it. Hi, it's Jason from the Dental Equipment Repair Channel. Today we want to look at a vacuum pump that we recently rebuilt. The performance of it isn't quite what we were hoping for, and I think I've discovered why. The vacuum on a wet ring vacuum pump, which is what this is, should be around 10 to 12 inches of mercury, which is the vacuum rating for a vacuum pump. Now, this vacuum pump operates on a principle of injecting water into an impeller housing, spinning an impeller very fast, and creating suction on one side of the pump, which is this side, and then discharging the actual um, exhaust on the other side of the pump, which comes out here. Now in this particular setup, we have a test bench that recirculates the water. So we've got everything hooked up and ready to go. What I want to show you is how the pump responds when resistance is put both to the front of the pump as well as to the top of the vacuum relief valve. Turn it on right now. All right, now with this particular pump, right, we're re reading right around 10, 10 inches of mercury and the vacuum relief valve here turns and this is how we adjust the pressure higher and lower. And so with a wet ring vacuum pump, the thing that you're going to be looking for um, in order to test is with the system closed off and not open, having no demand, we're going to go ahead and block this relief valve. And what we're expecting is we're expecting for this number to, to go up above, I would say above 25 would be a very healthy pump. I'm blocking it off fully right now and we're hitting about 17. Now, the reason this is moving is because the vacuum pump is applying suction to this trunk, which is going over to this canister and out to the room. So if it was open, this is going to be where the business end of the pump is. So by closing this off and closing this, we're, re we're achieving the maximum vacuum. The thing I want to show you is because this number is low and we're not achieving a high vacuum, this is going to create a scenario that I think you're really going to want to see. What that is, is when this vacuum valve is running and say it was up at 25 with my hand on it, that would mean that it's actually moving quite a bit of air. In here, down here, through the impeller housing and out. To the drain. Now because this vacuum is weaker, what's happening is it's not moving the amount of air by and that's causing this vacuum pump to get hot down here. Now the reason that's a problem is because there's what's called a mechanical seal. The reason this matters is because at the base of this pump is an impeller. This is what a dental impeller looks like and this impeller is spinning very fast. What's happening is as it turns, it's spinning and on one side is the side of the pump itself. And on the, so if there's gonna be a side that's closer to the wall of the pump and there's, depending on how it's spinning, it's going to have one side is gonna be lower and the other side is gonna be higher pressure. So it's sucking on one side and, and pushing on the other. Now, when this spins, there's what's called the mechanical seal. So this is the brass impeller, and this is what's called the mechanical seal. The mechanical seal has two parts that mate together. They interface together. So these two parts go together, okay? This part here goes up into the top of the impeller housing, and then this part is pushed up against the actual impeller itself, just like this. So what happens as the top part stays still and the impeller turns, 
what happens is it actually dissipates that friction across this union, which I believe it's a porcelain, it's a porcelain union. And you can see from, from here, there's actually wear into that. And these are, and these have actually grown into a mated part. So this is exactly what's happening on the inside of this pump. And the reason that this pump gets hot, this is all exposed to the temperature of that impeller housing. And when this heats up, it's going to cause extra wear on this union, which is responsible for sealing the actual water inside the impeller housing while this is moving. So if you ever wondered, how does the water stay in even though the impeller is moving? It's this part right here, which is called a mechanical seal. Now that we've let the pump run for a little while, I want to use a thermal imaging camera to show you what we're looking at here with regard to the heat. Now, there has not been a lot of air moving across it, and it's been running here for about five minutes. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the thermal camera. We can see here that there's already growing, there's a huge temperature difference between the top of the pump, which is fairly cool, and the bottom of the pump. Now, 98 degrees, this is a little bit uncomfortable to the touch. What I'm going to show you is that this pressure right here, okay, we're sitting right at about between nine and 10. See that? Now, actually, this wet ring pump should be closer to around 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase by turning this, this whole assembly down, what's going to happen is I'm going to increase the vacuum. Now you can see it's starting to climb and I'm going to make it go up where it should be as a healthy pump, right around 12. quite a few turns on it. All right, so now this pump is right where we want it. Now, we'll open it up. All right, that is a pretty healthy pump. All right, the problem with that is when it's blocked off, See, we, we're not getting really any air flowing through it. I think we were there at 98 degrees. That's just me kind of blocking that off. And our vacuum is definitely not doing good. We're sitting there right at around 14, which is not good at all. So we're going to turn... So we'll turn our, our camera back on, and now we'll go ahead and look at the temperature and see what it's doing. And it's already climbed to 108 degrees. All right, now we can keep letting this climb up. But what I really wanna show you, we that now the reason this is getting hot and I'll, I promise, it's definitely hot. That's not comfortable. I can't hold my hand there for very long. Now, what's going to happen here is we'll keep the camera on it, or nearby. We're at about 113.2. I'm going to open this valve to simulate airflow coming in through here. Like if there was airflow, like there should be. Because when I block this off, it should be going all the way up to 25 and it's not. So I'm going to open this up just to give a final check. We're at about 115 degrees. Okay, that is not, in case you wonder, that's not a healthy pump at all. That is not good. So we'll open this up and then we'll just watch what the camera does. So I'm going to open that up so that water or that air can blow by it and you're just going to see right in front of your eyes you're going to see that number Turn that back on. all right you're going to 
see in front of your eyes, you're going to see that, that pump housing start to cool down. We're already at about 102. Now, just to kind of show you it in reverse, we're going to go block this off again. you to take away from this is the health of a vacuum pump isn't simply how much suction you get towards the operatories. It's also how much strength is left over to pull air in through your vacuum relief valve to actually cool the pump housing itself. If your pump is old and tired, it might be possible to go ahead and max it out so you do get the suction that you need to your operatories, but this pump right here is not going to last you very long. So. This is something to keep an eye out with your pumps and if you're a service technician to be aware of that just because a pump is pulling doesn't mean that it's healthy. That it might be that it's on the verge of dying and you have the ability to help your customer know that it's time for them to act prior to a catastrophic failure. And definitely, if you don't have a thermal imaging gun, this is a handy device to have. Again, it's going to give us it's going to give us information that's extremely useful and compelling when we're having conversations with our customers and we're able to talk in terms of colors, we're able to talk in terms of parts and we can have a very technical conversation in a way that is not intimidating and it's very easy to understand because of the pictorial nature of the thermal camera. This is a Fleur TG165, and I would highly recommend this camera. I know there are applications for your phone, but what's nice about this camera is it's a purpose-built device. If you go into an office and you have this tool, it's what it's for. You're not, you're not there trying to have a conversation with the doctor while you're looking at your phone. This is something where, hey, you go in and you can troubleshoot electronics and you can do all kinds of different things. So it's kind of a bonus tip for you here that this device is going to be great as you try to help customers understand what's going on with their equipment and do a good job troubleshooting. Thanks again. It's Jason from the Dental Equipment Repair Channel. Thank you.